Carlos Alcaraz, our new world number one after winning the US Open, has now gone and been defeated in his first competitive matchup since the US Open. It is David Goffin who has defeated him, a lucky loser in Astana. And also, Casper Ruud, finalist from the US Open as well, has also crashed out in the first round in Tokyo. And Jose Morgado here reporting, saying lucky loser David Goffin, uh, who lost to 19-year-old Luca Nardi in the qualifying and replaced 19-year-old Holger Una in the main draw, beats 19-year-old Carlos Alcaraz, no less uh, than the ATP world number one. And it was 7-5, 6-3 straight sets to reach the second round in Astana. That's the first straight sets loss of the year for Alcalaz in 63 matches. I mean, he's been in a, on an incredible run and unfortunately it had to come to an end at some point. Is the pressure getting to him as new world number one? That is the big question. And he came out and he said, I've heard Medvedev say that he felt the pressure of being number one. I haven't felt it. And uh, his first match as world number one, as you can see there, losing in straight sets. Uh, it says for the fourth time uh, in the last 10 years, the number one ranked player loses against a lucky loser. Uh, we've got Madrid in 2017, Borna Chorich uh, versus Andy Murray there. We've got Queens, we've got 2017, and that is Jordan Thompson, Andy Murray. Andy Murray getting in there a bit too much for my liking. We've got Vienna 2020, and that was uh, Djokovic uh, against Sanego. And we've got, uh, obviously, Nurse Sultan. There we go, and it is David Goffin and Carlos Alcaraz, unforeseen. We've got Gaspar Abirio Lanza here saying the first tour match as world number one. And we've got Federer versus Clement in Rotterdam 2004. Straight sets win for Federer. Nadal versus Foe in US Open 2008. Nadal, nice straight sets win for him too. Djokovic versus Davidenko in Montreal 2011. Straight sets for Djokovic. Murray, <laughs> straight sets win against Chilitz at the ATP Finals in 2016. And there's, unfortunately, Alcaraz not joining that list of players there. The big four, as they were known. And we've got uh, this one from Vanchin, quite a nice one, uh, saying the current world number one, Alcalaz, is the youngest player inside the ATP top 151 of the rankings. Uh, we've got Lucas Nardi, who is the world number 152 uh, and is born on the August the 6th, 2003. And quite interesting because Nardi, obviously, uh, he has played his first round match as well, and he actually went through against Shevchenko. So Nadi will continue in the competition. Going to be interesting to see how he gets on. He's my dark horse for the competition. It's going to be a tough one because uh, he does have Sissipas next. But if you're going to play any of those big players, I think Sissipas is probably one that people would pick. And more shocks coming. It is... The other finalist from the US Open is Kasper Ruud. He crashes out to Juan Munar. And that is, well, in straight sets again. 6-3, 6-3. And Munar goes through to the second round where he will face another Spaniard in Pedro Martinez. Obviously, Kasper Ruud choosing not to play Astana, going all the way over to Tokyo, where it's, I'd say, an easier draw for sure. It hasn't paid off. He's still gone out in the first round there. Uh, a bit shocking, really. These are our US Open finalists um, who were looking so great only a couple of weeks ago. And now, look at them, both out in the first round of the next tournament. And this one uh, from Pavi G saying, here are top three ranked Casper Ruud losses to players uh, outside the top 50 this year. I mean, you can see here he's lost to also Nishioka, Ben Shelton, Ugo Umber. We got Ryan Peniston in there as well and Dusan Lajovic. And I know JG has come out and said that it's a little bit of a, I don't know, a bit of not a travesty, but 
that Casper Ruud, if he was to become world number one after the US Open, it wouldn't be uh, merited because of all of the 250s and he hasn't looked convincing enough. And he's also said that Carlos Alcaraz, maybe not that convincing as world number one. It's just been down to a bit circumstantial, some may say. Obviously, Djokovic dropping a lot of points this year and wasn't able to play a lot of tournaments. Medvedev not having a great time, obviously, with the war in Ukraine and all the, the, the heat around Russia. It's not been easy for him becoming world number one either. Just not a good first look for all these new world number ones, is it? I mean, the life after the big three, they're going to have to take a, a little bit of time, I think, to adjust to being top of the tree. But let me know your thoughts on this. Is this just a blip in the uh, illustrious tale that is Carlos Alcalaz and Casper Ruud? And will we be seeing them back to winning ways in the next tournament? I want to know your comments in the section below. But if you haven't already, hit a like on the video, subscribe to Game to Love if you're new, and join us for Radu Kanu versus Kasatkina. That's coming up very shortly.